All right, boys and girls, the price of Bitcoin has bounced and it's right up around $40,000 again. But will this rally be sustained or are we going to get rejected and make another leg lower? Here we have the price of Bitcoin and it is sitting at about $40,000 right now, just below it actually at the time of recording. And we did make it just above it earlier this morning before finding a little bit of resistance here and coming back down just under $40,000. So I'm sure everybody's wanting to know if we're going to continue to the downside or if we're going to continue back up through the $40,000 range. Well, as I said in my video yesterday, we were probably due for a little bit of a bounce here because we did have this bullish divergence forming on the hourly RSI. And it looks like we did have that bounce, but unfortunately, it looks like we're getting caught at this resistance here, which was a previous level of support right around $40,000. And if we can't actually break above this and sustain this rally, then it looks like we're going to be getting rejected here and going back down for another leg lower, possibly even filling out this bear flag like I've been talking about for a few days now. And that has a price target of roughly $34,700. Going back to this RSI divergence here, you can see that it has actually played out to the upside. And it looks like we might be forming a weak, but still a bearish divergence here, indicated by this higher high or really just an even high here on the RSI and a lower high on the price. That combined with this level of resistance and the continuation of this bear flag makes me think that we're probably going to continue to the downside, but we do have a possible level of support here at this red line around $37,600. So hopefully that will catch us and make us bounce a little bit, but I don't really expect it to. And I think that we're probably gonna continue down to the price target I previously mentioned around $34,500. That's not really confirmed yet though, and it does look like we're almost making a bullish divergence here on the daily RSI, but a divergence is usually supposed to be formed whenever there's a swing high or a swing low in the price, and then you compare that with swing highs and swing lows here with the RSI. It looks like we do have a couple of swing lows here on the RSI that are making a downtrend, and if you follow the bottom of the price action from the same date ranges, then you can see that the Minimum price is actually increasing day by day, but it doesn't really seem to be a swing low here, and maybe this isn't actually confirmed as a divergence yet. Plus, with this not really being a swing low, it's not actually a very strong level of support. So if we do continue to the downside, we might just break right through that and go down to this other red line around $32,000 before putting in a real solid bullish divergence here and maybe even bouncing off of this upward trending support line that we've been bouncing off of since the beginning of last year. Right now though, it looks like we are making lower lows on the hourly chart and unless Bitcoin can break above about $41,500 making a higher high here, it looks like we're probably going to continue to the downside and we might get rejected right here at around $40,000 and coming all the way down to fill out the price target for this bear flag pattern. The mainstream media is continuing to pump out FUD as you can see according to this article on Reuters, that says Bitcoin has fell below $40,000, the lowest level since Bitcoin's ETF launches. Well, we've been at the lowest level since the Bitcoin ETF launch since about an hour after the launch. Because as I said in my video right before it was actually announced, we had a quick pump to about $49,000 before getting immediately rejected and dumping for the remainder of the day and the coming weeks. That ETF approval happened right here at around 47,000 and then within the next couple of hours we pumped up to 49 and came back down. So like I said, we've been below the price of the approval since about an hour after the approvals actually happened and this FUD from the media is just trying to scare people so that they won't come in buying the dip and BlackRock can just make all of the money. Also, according to this article on Yahoo Finance, Coinbase has now been downgraded at JP Morgan as crypto enthusiasm cools. With Coinbase being the custodian for most of these Bitcoin ETFs and JP Morgan actually issuing them, you would think these guys would be working together, but JP Morgan obviously sees cryptocurrency as a direct threat to its business, and they're going to take any opportunity they can to spread FUD about native cryptocurrency companies. Also, as you've probably already heard, FTX has been selling the majority of their bankrupt exchanges grayscale Bitcoin trust shares, and this has had a significant part to do with the downward pressure that we've seen over the past week or so. Apparently, FTX estate had 22.28 million GBTC shares, and they sold all of them. And all of these outflows are almost equal to the amount of inflows we've been seeing from the new ETFs, 
meaning that FTX and GPTC have actually been stunting the growth of the whole space. And now that they've sold off all of the shares that they had in their possession, hopefully that selling pressure can't continue. And maybe the inflows from the new ETFs are going to push the price up soon. Additionally, though, we do have Celsius Wallet depositing nearly $36 million worth of Ethereum onto crypto exchanges. And since Celsius is one of those defunct crypto lending platforms that went down during the whole FTX situation and the contagion therein, we might actually see them offloading this $36 million worth of Ethereum, and that's causing some more FUD in the market as well. Not to mention we have Terraform Labs supposedly filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I kind of thought they did that several months ago when they collapsed during the bear market. But we also have Mt. Gox seemingly getting closer to their Bitcoin repayments for their 2014 collapse and hack, according to this article on Coindesk. And somehow it looks like the ghosts of crypto cycles past are continuing to come and attack us in the night. But on the bright side, it looks like all of this is just old news and they can't come up with any kind of new FUD that can send the market down. And maybe we're actually reaching the end of the FUD because the media just keeps continuing to recycle old news. As if the mainstream media and all of these old crypto companies that have collapsed are not enough to send the market down, we still have Elizabeth Warren waging her war against cryptocurrency technology. According to this article on Cointelegraph, X has added a community note to Senator Warren's claims on dodging sanctions with crypto. I briefly covered this in my most recent video, but apparently a new US GAO report confirms that the rogue nations are using crypto to dodge sanctions and undermine our national security. It's time for crypto to follow the same AML rules as everyone else. I've got a bill to make it happen. As I've said in some of my previous videos, I think because Elizabeth Warren has such a bad track record of actually getting bills pushed through, her actually announcing that she's got a bill to make it happen almost guarantees us that it's not going to happen and there's almost nothing to worry about. But it looks like the community is alert to her deception because they came down here and made a community note saying that the U.S. Treasury Department's own February 2022 National Money Laundering Risk Assessment Report states that fiat is the preferred currency for financial crimes. And according to this article on CCN, not to be confused with CNN or Communist News Network, U.S. Senator Cynthia Loomis slams Elizabeth Warren, crypto is not the problem criminals are. I really wish that this was an actual physical slam where Cynthia Loomis actually body slammed Elizabeth Warren right on the Senate floor, but I guess a verbal slam is good enough for now. She said $900 million in non-crypto or fiat currency money laundering versus $900,000 in crypto money laundering. Crypto is clearly not the problem criminals and bad actors are. This is a really good point by Cynthia Loomis because we actually already have laws against criminal activities, scams, and theft. And as she continues to say, it would be a historic mistake to crush an entire emerging industry based on incorrect data. By regulating through enforcement and waging a war against cryptocurrency, the government is not actually stopping criminal activity on the blockchain. People in other countries aren't asking US lawmakers like Elizabeth Warren for permission to use the blockchain. They just use it for whatever they want while the U.S. government tries to stop its own citizens from engaging in lawful activities with this new technology. If people like Elizabeth Warren get their way, then you're not going to be able to transact with this new cryptocurrency technology, but criminals will have free reign to use the blockchain because they're not asking what the United States law says, they just use it because it's open source code. The government doesn't even have the power to stop Bitcoin or cryptocurrency technology because as long as there's a node that's running the code anywhere in the world, then it's going to work for whatever criminals want it to work for. The only thing that the government actually has power over is to make you arbitrarily a criminal and try to bully you into submission. Elizabeth Warren is the real criminal and a traitor because she's compromised and belongs to the banks and they have her working against, not for, the people that she's actually supposed to represent. In my opinion, this amounts to treason, and as an American patriot, I'm not asking that traitor what the hell I can and can't do. Let me know in the comments, does Elizabeth Warren deserve any respect, or is she the real criminal that we should all be skeptical of? Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Most importantly though, don't forget to have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.